In this video we are going to model a Hario water kettle. I've brought in an image of the kettle with the picture command. And now first I'm going to scale it. So I'm selecting the image. And I know that the kettle is about 127 millimeters high. So start a scale command. Pick a reference point at the bottom and one at the top and then type in 127 and zoom extends. Next I want to have the image some transparency. So go to the material and scroll down to transparency and change it to about 60%. Now in order to model from the center of the kettle, you see that it's a little bit off from the green center line, the y-axis. I make a helping line And then select both the line and the picture and move from the mid to zero and then move it up a bit until the kettle is at the bottom at zero zero. Then I can delete the line. and lock the picture. Let's start by drawing the kettle outline using the freeform control point curve for this. And just make it with three points snapping to the end don't worry about the rounds we'll come back to that later like that let's see if it is really in the middle So I'm mirroring around the zero, zero axis. And you see it's a little bit off center still. So let's move the picture a little bit with the arrow and alt key. And then mirror again. Now that's fairly good. So the same for the cover. Make sure to extend the curve a bit so that it's on level of this endpoint. You can even move it like that. And then the same for the handle. Plus a straight line. And then select all curves at once and make a revolve around the zero axis. And we make a full circle. For the spout, using the freeform curve again, Now 
and I'm extending a bit through the kettle as you can see I can trim that off later on if needed and then making a piped surface around it with the pipe command I know that the diameter of this spout is about 10 millimeters so a radius of 5 and then in order to trim off in this direction I use a curve a simple line like that start a trim command and remove that bit we can hide the source curves for now change them to another layer lock that layer we can do the same for the other curves Now let's take a look at the handle. The handle could be seen as uh, a single curve which runs through the center of this handle, which is then later offset. It. So again, using a degree three curve. And as you can see, I'm just eyeballing here. Switch on history and make an offset. On both sides with a rounded end cap using through point. something like that and then I'm going to edit the curve until it matches more or less the handle don't need the gumball right now so turn it off So I've skipped a little bit of the video so you can see the end result of my tweaking and now I'm deleting this curve and then make another offset but this time use the lose option by the way this option is not available in the Rhino 5 for Mac yet And then use seven units and this gives me a much more clean result that I can tweak a little bit and those points I don't need can use a curve to trim off and that looks fairly nice let's go to making the actual section the handle top is a little bit rounded so I want to have a curve that follows that round of the edge so I'm going to the C planes and then set a C plane perpendicular to a curve 
I'm doing that in the perspective view so that you can see how it switches the construction plane which is currently an XY in the world orientation. I'm using this icon here set C plane perpendicular to curve and then click on this curve on the endpoint and now you see the construction plane is relative to that curve. So let's make something like an arc and for now hide the image and also hide the surfaces already generated. And then I'm making an arc with a start point. Let's turn on grid snap here. And then through the endpoint. And now use the curve to sweep this just generated arc in freeform style. And this is okay, we have some overlap here, but we're going to cut that off in, in a minute. So going back to the world top. And now to the side view. I want to make a projection which is more or less perpendicular to this line. So I'm making an extrusion as a helping service. D for direction in both sides. And then use set C plane to object. And now I can delete this service. And then use set view plan. And I'm looking in the direction of the surface. Then I'm making some trimming curves for the handle. Mirror over. And then extrude these. and set this back to perspective. I need one more trimming curve. Or actually a surface. And I can do this with cut plane. I'm making a cutting plane like this. And now we have all surfaces to generate the handle. And since they're enclosing a volume, I can use the create solid command. Select all surfaces and generate the handle service. I've tweaked the uh, curves a little bit because I found the handle a bit too wide. So now I'm using these to trim off the extra. Let's do that with um, Boolean split.
then I can delete the services and also delete the extra parts. Now let's add some fillets to the handle. The lower edge needs to have a radius first. So starting the fillet edge command with a radius of 4. And then repeat, but this time with a radius of 2 for the other edges. I can just drag around everything. Like that. For organizational purposes, let's reselect all the curves again with the cell curve command. And move them to the locked purple layer. And then we're going to model this part which connects the handle to the body. So in my side view, front view, I'm just dragging out a freeform curve once more. And then in my perspective view, going to move this curve a bit like that, let's say six mil, and then mirror it over to the other side on the x axis. And there's a new curve, and then connect these two. Let's make a blend curve from approximately this point to that point using tangency and trim and then mirror this over again on the x-axis and use it to trim this corner off. Then join them back together and again use pipe command, this time with a radius of 2.5. And there you have it, showing back all the other parts and hiding the image. Now we are going to do some detailing. As you can see, these surfaces are still open. So let's join these back together and use the command cap to close off these surfaces. And we can add around here And only we need to model the bottom part. This bottom part could be seen as something that goes like this. doesn't really need to be exact just for the shape of it then I'm moving these to that endpoint and moving this to the center and then I can revolve that one again Finally, we will be filleting the edges of the body.
like that and then our model is finished for now if you like this video then please uh, hit the like button and subscribe for more videos hope to see you next time thanks for watching